Hi, everybody. This is Jim Cornette, pro wrestling legend, and you're listening to the Book in the Territory Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. Who, messy distance professional wrestler Jimmy Vine, the Boogie Wookie Man. Tell my people and my brothers and sisters, don't you dare, don't you dare miss Booking the Territory. Oh, yeah. This is a one man gang. You're listening to Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. This is the artist formerly known as Daryl Van Horn, James Mitchell, the Sinister Minister, and I'm here to let you know I would rather slam my cock in a car door than to miss the dulcet tones of Hard Body Harper, my illegitimate son, on Booking the Territory podcast. <laughs> Brawler. Hey, what's going you, on? Ladies and gentlemen, every, well, I said mostly gentlemen listening to this. Uh, I uh, just <laughs> called up, I can't call him the old name anymore. He is now the brawler, Brian Malonis from ROH. What's up, man? What's going on, Mike? How are you? I'm good. I'm sitting here with my uh, co host, uh, Doc, who, if you ever want a visual of what Doc looks like, he kind of looks like Baron Corbin, except with hair. And um, <laughs> no tattoos. He's really I look like well, I look like Bobby Lashley, but white. <laughs> uh, Brian, it's, this it's is Doc. Great, Doc, this is Brian. Well, what's up, yeah, Doc? It's great to, it's <laughs> great to have there? an actual. Well, it's great to have an actual professional pro- podcaster and wrestler in the booth. Since well, I usually have to deal with this mud show outlaw bullshit, <laughs> Mike Menace. <laughs> Boy, it's not not kind words to say about you, Mike. Oh no, no, of course he's he's um <laughs> he always gives he always gives me he always gives me shit him and him and Harper. Hey, so I wanted to bring you on, man, because I knew us trying to slog through three hours of Raw might be a little bit of a challenge, and I I promise you we wouldn't talk talk any Raw with you. Doc and I are are just kind of watching the first thirty minutes, so I figured I'd I'd bring you on and see if we got any any listener questions. But before we get started. Um, you, um, you are now under contract with ring of honor and tell me how great that makes you feel. Oh, it's, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, 17 years to to get to that point. And, uh, uh, it was, it was very surreal. And, and And the funny thing is it was probably the easiest conversation I've ever had in, in pro wrestling. I think you, you build up these things in your mind. Uh, you know, in reality, it was a very quick and easy process, and uh, I can't thank Ring of Honor enough for the opportunity. And it's pretty sweet, man. Uh, I don't know if it it made it you know sweeter after all this time. I don't really have any point of reference, but uh, you know, I'm just enjoying it. Yeah, I, I you and I exchanged that. We'll we'll go behind the curtain. You and I exchanged a couple texts when when it was going down, and you had kind of shared with me it had happened like right before uh, you you like I guess officially announced. Or, or as you were officially announcing, and and um, you know, I, I always have a, a soft spot for guys who I, seventeen years is a long time to beat the paths of the independents and making those towns, and you know, sometimes not making much money, sometimes going into negative, making money if we're being real when you first start out uh, between you know gas and expenses and all that stuff and paying for gear. So I know it was special for you because uh, you you. I mean, let's face it. Nothing came easy. It it all took time. Uh, if it came easy, it probably would have wouldn't mean as much. So I, I would guess that meant a whole lot to you that it didn't come easy. And after all those years, you kind of settle into it. And it's like, oof. I guess uh, it, I don't want to say you sit there and you don't. You're not relieved in a sense that oh, I made it. I can not do something now. But it's like it's almost like a validating process. Or do you feel more validated now? I guess is what I want to ask. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I feel, I mean, I, I mean, I guess in a way it is validation. Um, it, it represents more of a kind of a seismic shift in the, in the industry, um, to be perfectly honest. Like, I mean, and, and you know, you have to have confidence in yourself in this business. And I, and I've always felt like, um, I had something more to offer, um, than I, than I had the opportunity to, as far as the platform, whether that be WWE or, um, you know, like a TNA or, or ring of honor as they started to grow. Um, 
I always felt like I had I had more to offer, and I just I, especially with um, where I you know where I trained at the Chaotic Training Center it was very WWE centric. It was very WWE or bust, um, and I wasn't cookie cutter. And 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 the large part of and I'm not making excuses because you know it, it, it just my journey is my journey, um, but you know it it was very much a six you know six two two forty sort of era um you know a lot of guys that all looked sort of the same um from a body standpoint body guys if you will and there wasn't really a lot of uh room and opportunity for for different looks and different body types at that point that's just that's not an excuse that's just facts uh the what was the cookie cutter we've said it a bunch of times six four six five yeah, two hundred and forty pound chiseled, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you look you at were... a guy like Hansen too, you know, he I mean, that guy was, you know, having the best matches um in New England a decade ago and he wasn't cookie cutter either. And it's ironic that when he stopped trying to be cookie cutter and he found this this look and this character and this style of wrestling that his career took off. That uh, Doc, you've you've probably never seen like photos or videos of of Hanson before he was Warbeard Hanson, or have you? Let me ask you. No, my first exposure was when they joined uh, ROH. So, if you ever saw video of 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 Hanson, <laughs> I've seen some of the some of the, some of the like uh, pictures you've posted, Brian, and in some that Crockett posted. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing the transformation. I mean, unless you know that's who he is, you, you would just. Some of the some of the photos I've seen, they look nothing like what he is now. So I yeah, and like you said, he kind of went with that look, and uh, him and Ray just they were well, you know, before you guys were in in ROH, them and the Briscoes were were my favorite tag teams there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're they're doing they're doing great things, and uh, I mean, in the Briscoes, I mean, their their resume speaks for for itself. Um, I can't wait till we till we lock horns with those guys again, man. They are, they are something else. They are they are unbelievable, and um, you know, uh, if for all the comings and goings in, in Ring of Honor, um, you know, it was one of those things where I knew we'd be all right because when I you know I look to my right, I see the Briscoe brothers, and I look to my left, I see Jay Lethal, and you know that 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 makes the world feel right. Uh, you know, especially for at least my you know my time in that locker room and my perception of the company as a whole. You know, before I joined it. Did uh so uh, so how soon until you and Malo you and uh, I'll say you Malonis you and Bruiser win those uh, tag titles? Because uh, I sense it in the future, man. So let's let, let's be bold about this. I'm just kidding, man. You don't have to predict that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, hell with that. I'll make a bold prediction. I say before before the calendar turns this year. Before the calendar turns, Brian Malonis says him in the Beer City Bruiser, the Bouncers, are going to take care of the Briscoes. There you heard it. So I didn't even have to really, like, bribe him to say it. I didn't even have to pull it out of him. He just predicted it. There it is. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I mean, you got to believe in yourself. you got to have confidence, you know. And uh, we, we have every opportunity right now to um, to make that happen, um, you know. And, it, you know, I'm talking in a very real sense. The opportunity is there. Um you know, it's it's right there in front of us, and and you know, you can kind of feel it. With, you know, the different places that we've gone in the last few months, and that yeah. that people are really digging us and and really starting to come along with us, and it's awesome. It's it's an unbelievable feeling. Yeah, no, I, I thought I thought from the time I told you from the time you you guys got together that I thought it was a perfect match. It really was. With uh, I've I've Doc and I have been. I mean, this is uh, Doc. It's been what three years since we had Bruiser on. I, it's been a while, hasn't it? When was Bru Bruiser on? Was in yeah, Bruiser so was on in 2015 on this show. And I think you and I had agreed at that time that, like, man, that guy's got something. He's different. And um, I thought when you guys got together that it was just a a perfect fit. Uh, Phobos two seven one on on the chat. Uh, those belts won't fit around their waist. I don't really think they care about that, right, Brian? <laughs> no, I mean, hey, we, may, maybe we can uh, talk to the powers that be and get them to invest in some belt straps. You know, um, I, I it, you know, I, I don't care if the belt fits around my waist or not. Damn, I mean, <laughs> the belt extension. Just, you know, I don't gimmick, care man. what you call me. You know, if we get those belts, I don't care what you call me. Just call me world champ. All right. <laughs> that, there you go, man. 
<laughs> um, and everybody out there listening and, and uh, paying attention to our uh, Raw Watch Along, we just took a segue because we got one of the very talented members of the Ring of Honor roster, Brian Malonis, the brawler Brian Malonis. So uh, we are kicking it in with him for a little while. That's why we, we got away from Raw. So just to just let everybody know out there, we didn't bail on it yet. But uh, while I got a uh, spectacular ROH talent, I think I'll I think I'll talk a little ROH. So yeah, I know Phobos. I know you're killing. I know I know you're joking. I know who you are. So thank you. All right. So <laughs> hey Brian, you um you got you got a b- bunch of stuff going on though, man. So I, first off, uh, I mentioned the the wrestling podcast about nothing every single week on this show, uh, twice a week actually on the two shows. So uh, you and you and um and Crockett started doing something new recently. So. You wanna you wanna mention that uh trucking the territory? Uh, I love when Crockett does that. <laughs> I know it's terrible. It's, it's awful. It drives me crazy. Is uh you know I I really want I really wanted to actually do like a little jingle or something like that. But Mike has his little things he likes to do. But yeah, trucking trucking through the territories. There's a lot of, um, I mean just there's just a lot of like ter- territory type type things that we haven't seen before oh we know oh we know we know we're the territory (laughs) gods man come on as much as you bash us we are the territory (laughs) gods i had to get that in but we figured like you know if we haven't seen it there's probably a lot of people like us who haven't seen it so we thought it'd be a really fun idea to um literally truck through as if we were like getting in a car and and doing it and that's how we're kind of going we're we're um you know we started in the northeast with the with the wwwf and then we went to quebec and then uh to um toronto this time uh not physically but you know (laughs) metaphorically i guess but we're we're gonna really gonna explore kind of an episode of different television programs from the different territories um, and sort of make our way kind of around North America and the United States and um, just kind of see what, what we missed all these years. <laughs> no, you've missed a lot as much as you like to bash the territory since you're, you know, a WWE and a Hogan guy. Hey, Doc, I'm going to get you hot. Brian Malonis is a Hogan guy. What do you have to say to him? <laughs> the only guy more overrated in the history of the wrestling business than Hulk Hogan is Sting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's cool. I get it. You guys like those regional stars that you know uh, from. I like wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian and I go back and forth on Twitter a lot of times about this. Although we've settled down recently, I was told by your illustrious co-host Michael Crockett that he was going to bring me on for an episode of Mid South. So uh, he he told me that, but he's never got back to me. And uh, uh, but Mike takes a long time to get back to things. If you, you know how he is, he can procrastinate. Oh my. Yeah, it's the worst. Like I'll, I'll te- you know what the worst thing about? Let me tell you a Mike Crockett story here. The worst thing about Mike Crockett is when the answer. Say, say you like you're like, hey Mike, let's uh, get together for dinner or something. You text him. If the answer is no, he never actually answers no. He just pretends like he never even received the text. <laughs> like just radio silence from the guy whenever the you know whenever the answer is no to something. He can't just nut up and say, hey, no, thank you. I'm I'm not gonna make it. It's always just radio silence and i have to actually like badger him to answer me well you know he's we have a guy we well shut up mike we have a guy you should meet his name is hard body harper (laughs) he just doesn't show up no that's not true (laughs) that's not true how many shows have we done how many shows have we done where we just never heard from harper maybe two at the most and it was something that came up like he forgot or something it's not that he just doesn't answer though he you know how he is he doesn't have kids so you know he flies by the seat of his pants i mean he takes life by the horns and bangs squirters with no protection so i mean what, what, what are we talking about here i mean we're talking about a different type of beat no i gotta go back to crockett for a second i want to tell do you remember the new jack story crockett told that time uh brian do you I don't recall? know if I do. You have to refresh my memory. Okay, so and I may be getting this wrong because it's been like a year and a half since I heard this story. But evidently, he was he was he was refereeing on a card that New Jack was on. And would you agree that Mike is kind of like I don't want to say he's passive, but I guess he is in many ways. Very. Oh my okay. God. Very. He yes. avoids confrontation at all costs. That's the word I'm looking for. Not so much as passive in life in general, but when it comes to confrontation, he's going to back off and just not deal with it. So uh, New Jack, I think it was New Jack was on a card and Crockett's sitting on a Crockett and he's uh, Crockett sitting on a Crockett. Crockett's sitting on a stage <laughs> before the show. 
and New Jack comes out from the from the back, and New Jack screams, <laughs> screams something like, "Hey, hey y'all got some cocaine out here?" <laughs> <laughs> or it's, I gotta ask Crockett the story. Oh, I remember this story. Now. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the full details of it, but <laughs> and Crockett yeah, my... shrivels up and is scared to death because New Jack just screamed at, and he looks up like, "Oh my God, he's gonna kill me!" <laughs> uh, so Cro- yeah, Mike's he's got a lot Mike of stories is... though, man. He does. He's. Been, I mean, he's. He, you know, he really adds an interesting perspective into. Um, I mean, just in, just. I mean, other than just being my friend, but he really does have like interesting perspective. He's been around, uh, like at least kind of like you know on the on the fringe of of pro the pro wrestling business since the since the early nineties. I mean, you're talking about a guy who he was the cameraman at Triple H's first match, first career indie match. Like that's um so I mean while he wasn't totally in the business, he was at least around and um saw some saw some interesting things. And I think I think between that and just all the different jobs he's had and in wrestling and and you know between getting looks at by WWE getting looks by Ring of Honor um he just adds a really interesting perspective because he really has, you know, seen it and, and been around it all. Uh, and Mike is somebody who, you know, the, uh, geez, to listen to this. I don't even want him to hear me say it, but um, he's somebody who should who should have had a job in pro wrestling on a, on a bigger stage. Um, I mean, the two best referees I've ever worked with are Todd Sinclair, who's been the senior official for Ring of Honor for I don't know how long at this point, and and Mike Crockett, and it's it's really damn close. It's like one and one A. Um, I mean, Mike is you know we we like to give him shit for blowing up, but you know two seconds in the matches when he does referee now. But Mike is one of the best referees um, I've ever been in the ring with, and he deserved he deserved better in his career. Yeah, he, and he's when he was on the show with us, he 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 talked about not not being he didn't use the term aggressive, but assertive enough and and really going for it, and he kind of just was passive with it. So I, I kind of I, I know exactly what you mean. He's told me this story a bunch of times where he didn't you know grab it by the horns and take control of it to where he could he could be that referee you see on Raw or SmackDown or ROH or you know wherever. Uh, with a national company, he 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 freely would admit to that. And I mean, he's got some. He really does have some great stories uh, related to just you know, you know his time in the wrestling business. And like you said, the thing with Triple H. Um, I do have a question for you. I know the answer to this, but I think some of the listeners do. Uh, we got a question. So, are we going to see you at MSG? I think I know what your answer will be, but I will let you answer uh, in the way that you know the answer to be. Well, you know, um, <laughs> Mike's gonna kill me. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, I will be there. Whoa! Um, so we get the exclusive on it. <laughs> well, it's been alluded to. Um, you know, uh, it, it's it's one of those things. Like, I just don't want to jinx it. You know what I mean? Like it. It's. Um, <laughs> I, I I haven't even fully wrapped my you know, my, my brain around it yet. You know, I haven't like my brain has not fully comprehended that, you know, uh, a month from when this coming Wednesday, um, I'll be, I'll be in the ring in Madison square garden. Like, and, and it's just, I can't even, I, I, I just haven't even like comprehended it yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's how Mike felt when he, uh, that's how Mike felt when he was in the Kenner via Kenner, Louisiana VSW hall. <laughs> <laughs> actually actually since you want to be funny jackass i performed in one of the buildings that was not msg for obvious reasons but it was a staple of mid-south wrestling and that was the uh the saint bernard civic center which is a a decent sized building nothing like msg obviously not a big arena uh i mean we're talking three thousand people can fit in there but I performed there, and it was it was very it was a very nice experience to do so. You jackass. Okay, now the municipal uh, is still standing, but it is in ruins. That would have been a dream of mine, but never happened for obvious reasons. But no, that is great news. So, Mike Crockett, if you listen to this, eat it and bite me. Booking the territory <laughs> got the exclusive, and this was not planned. Um, Brian Malonis will be at MSG in. I'm assuming tagging and um, any opponents known, or we can't give that away. 
Uh, I mean, I, I can't say what's going on, <laughs> really, because it hasn't been announced yet. But uh, I'm just really excited to freaking do it, man. Like, that's it's just it's mind blowing to me. Um, I, I don't know. I think I mean, think for a lot of us, you know, it's mind blowing. But just when I think about where my career was at a few years ago and just kind of thinking I was going to, you know, just like, OK, I'm just going to, you know, I, I'm, you know, I. I did it. I've had tryouts. I've had looks. It didn't work out. I'm just going to be a local guy, and that's all I am, and that's okay. I I come to grips with it and, and come at peace with it, and then fast forward a few years, and here I am, you know, um, on the biggest wrestling weekend of the year, going to be in the middle of the ring at the most famous arena in the world. Like, it's I, I don't even know. Like, how do you put that into words? How do you, like, how do you even freaking talk about it, you know? It's well, de- mind-blowing. Not- Doc has his WrestleMania moment every day at work when he hits the RVD pose because that's the only crowd he'll ever, <laughs> he'll ever, he'll ever, he'll ever get. Uh, but no, I know it means a lot to you because you grew up, you grew up a WWF fan, and you know Hulk Hogan was your guy, and you know MSG is the arena, and it's like to finally be in there. It's one of those things where when you walk out, I'm pretty sure you'll take a deep breath and you know absorb it for a second and then be like, all right, let's get to work. So it's a cool thing, man. I'm I'm happy for you. Yeah, and I think that you know it's funny. I I really and I I really thought about that of making sure like I just take an extra second to like just almost take like those mental snapshots of like holy smokes. And I've had I've had I mean I've had a few opportunities to do that. I mean, um, you know, even just at the Hammerstein Ballroom um when we wrestled uh in the it was a dark match, a final battle, but just to be there on Ring of Honor's biggest night and in the in the heart of New York City and in that moment, I get those those are the cool moments. And, and and I mean, I like to give you crap about, you know, southern wrestling and things like that, but just I I, I mean, even to go to some buildings like, you know, we went to the the arena in Nashville, the Municipal Auditorium, and just looking up some of the things that happened in there, uh, in that building, you know, um, you know, Ric Flair uh, recapturing the world title versus Ricky Steamboat. Of course, there was also Hulk Hogan versus the Butcher, but we don't have to mention that. <laughs> but I, I think I think that's been one of the coolest things, though. Honestly, is some of the it, being a being a pro wrestling fan and going to some of the buildings um, that we have, whether it's, you know, whether it's the municipal auditorium in Nashville, the Lowell Memorial auditorium up my way, Hammerstein ballroom center stage in Atlanta. Like that's, that's awesome stuff. I just, I can't tell you how many times like I've tried to watch WCW Saturday night and figure out like, you know, how they set it up compared to like how ring of honor sets it up. I've looked at that too because I've watched the Ring of Honor shows that have been there, it, and it's uh, the lighting and everything is so much different that it, it. I mean, unless you knew, I mean, I guess if you know the buildings enough, you're going to notice it. But I've I've done the same thing just from a television perspective. I mean, you've actually been there to see it, but I've tried to look at it as well to see. Oh wait, what the heck is like? How did they have it set up versus this? You said something that's funny though. See, see, he likes to play heel on Twitter with me, but he will text me. He that is not a joke. He texted me when ROH was in Nashville, and he's like, he's like, man, he's like, this is where Steamboat and Flair did battle. So he he he's into that Southern wrestling history. Don't let it, that New England state of mind fool you. Uh, <laughs> he, he 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 talks that talk like he's this uh, Hulk Hogan WWF guy, but. He knows where the bread is buttered, and he understands that when it comes down to it, the Southern Territories made a made the thing go. So, hey, Doc, you got any questions for for Malonis? Yeah, um, is is Jay Lethal as cool a guy as he seems like he would be? Uh, yeah, I mean, Jay Jay Lethal is in a word, he's the man. I know that's kind of like a somebody else's character right now, but. Um, I mean, he he is the unquestioned leader of the Ring of Honor locker room. Um, he he is you know the guy there. He he's the deserved champion of Ring of Honor. Um, you know, he's the guy who uh, is often one of the first guys. You know, almost every match I've had there, um, he's one of the first one one of the first guys I'll encounter that will uh, give us feedback and and coaching and tips and. Um, I mean, to me, there, there's nobody more respected in that locker room. Um, and, and he's just, I feel very fortunate. You know, it's one, it's one of those things where you look around and, um, 
you know, and, and feel very fortunate to to share the locker room with him. And that's not just me um, spewing the company line because um, I've I've actually known or I've been on shows with Lethal for a number of years. There was a promotion I worked for up here that brought him in every month um, for a few years. So um, I have a lot of I have a lot of exposure to being around Jay and and just somebody who I'm very grateful to um, you know to share a locker room with it and really feel like I can call a friend. Okay, I got a follow up here. Outside of you and in, in Beer City, is Silas Young the most underrated man in wrestling? Uh, he's one of them. Uh, I mean, he's 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 the workhorse over there. I think it's he's one of those guys that no matter who you put him in there against, um, no matter who he wrestles, no matter what match he is on the card, the match is going to be good, and the crowd's going to be entertained, and he's going to go out there and and just be unbelievable silas is is awesome i you know i'm grateful for where we're at but um you know um i was a little sad that when you know when when we weren't with him anymore um but because of his talent but he i mean he's another guy too in that locker room that um you know you can lean on when you need when you need ideas or you need help or you're just looking for a little feedback looking to see if you could have done something different like he's uh another guy like that but yeah you're right on he's he's unbelievable he's silas Silas is great, and and there's a reason why um, he was so heavily pursued by other companies when 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 he was a you know free agent for a brief time. And I'm another guy. I'm really happy that uh, that stayed with Ring of Honor. And then I got one more question. I know you don't like Southern wrestling as much as Mike and I do, but if you ever found yourself fortunate enough to meet former NWA World Heavyweight Champion Tommy Rich. Would you be more respectful to him than our friend Mike Mills was in his encounter with Tommy Rich? I don't think oh, Brian, this... I don't think Brian knows the story about Tommy Rich. I don't think I've ever told it to him unless he's heard it on the show. But go go ahead, Brian. No, I I don't know this story. Uh, you know, I I I would like to think I'd be very respectful of uh, of Wildfire Tommy Rich. But what what did you do, Mike? <laughs> I want I want Doc to tell you the story. I want Doc's version of it. I want to see what, what spin he puts on it. Well, I think it was because you tried to steal Tommy Rich's eighth pitcher of beer pre match and he got hot at you and told you to get the hands off the merchandise. Is that right? That's not what happened, man. Keep <laughs> can you be more serious? Tell him the tell him what actually happened as you recall it. You as tell you- him this is your story to tell. Hey, it's not everybody that I I don't know just a whole bunch of people that is that disrespectful to a former world champion. So I think you should tell the story. All right. So, Brian, you've worked in some – everybody out there who's heard this a million times, I apologize. Doc loves bringing this up because I don't know why. And so there's that. So my apologies if you've heard this before. Uh, Brian, you, you've worked in many of small buildings, uh, pro wrestling, right? Uh, I have, inc- including last night. <laughs> okay, and 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 when I say small, I mean um, literally the changing room, quote unquote, dressing room. Sometimes may be as small as a broom closet. Would you Would you agree <laughs> with that statement? Have you been in situations like that? I I have indeed. Okay, so this the the lo- the short version of this story is, I. I walk in and like anyone would normally do whenever they're on a show as triple H is in the ring on raw. I just wanted to throw that out there for people who are still watching raw that are watching that or listening to this. Um, I walk in and Tommy rich, this, this broom closet is maybe five feet wide by 10 feet long. I walk in and you can't avoid him. So in a, a gesture of respect, one of my good friends is behind me. I, extend my hand and I say, Tommy, Mike, nice to meet you. My hand is sitting there for three to four seconds. He doesn't say anything. He keeps his head down and he looks up and says, I don't give a damn what your name is, boy. So (laughs) as to not be punked in front of him and the rest of the locker room, I pull my hand away and I start walking away and he says, 
he realizes first off nobody was taking a joke there's about eight guys in this long room and nobody's laughing at the joke so i just kind of like start walking away i'm like all right well you played me but i ain't about to make you not i'm not gonna show you you got over on me so i'll start walking away and when i as i walk away he extends he says oh man i'm just fucking with you man my name's tommy nice to meet you and doc gets mad because then i kind of like halfway extended my hand but was like yeah whatever dude and i just kind of like brushed him off and walked away he called that disrespect in a former nwa world champion <laughs> no no see you told the short version because how many pitchers of beer had he had at that point oh, you say? He, he, i mean the cup wasn't never empty brother <laughs> <laughs> this is back in like 1999 maybe 98 ish i can't remember man it's been a long time the eye of gibson i know you're out there thank you i see it he's in twitter jail he wants everybody to know he offended someone but the eye of gibson is out there uh the eye of gibson is is on the on the chat okay so that that's what happened brian he he was very disappointed. Yeah, i mean at least you, at least you didn't ask him where's my pizza i don't get that one <laughs> No, that's he was part of the FBI in, in oh, ECW. Oh, yeah, okay. The crowd used to chant, "Where's my pizza?" Yeah, the the full bottle Italian. He really is. He's a piece of work, though, man. At least my experience when I was around him, he he was a piece of work. Um, Brian, I got a I got a non wrestling related question for you. And um, what uh, Phobos two seven one Stephen wants to know why you are a Steelers fan. Now I know this answer, but you know you live in New England and in, in Patriots yeah. country, and he wants to know why you're a Steelers fan. I do. So, so very <laughs> short version. My pops was a Steelers fan, and the Patriots sucked when I grew up, and nobody was Patriot fans around here. Like none of my friends were Patriot fans. Everybody liked the Cowboys or the 49ers or the Raiders, and my dad was a big Steelers fan, and that was like our thing. That was our way of uh, of bonding uh, was uh, through Pittsburgh Steelers football. And if you ever want to, Brian, what's your Twitter? Is it is it at Brian Malonis? It is, yeah, at Brian Malonis. Okay, I had to plug this because if you if you like football and you like seeing people cut promos on Patriots fans, <laughs> fucking from August through January, Brian Malonis is consumed with cutting promos on Patriots fans all season long. <laughs> I, I don't think he goes to sleep. I don't think he goes to sleep. Somehow he tweets out about the Patriots all season long. But anyway. Um, it's like fishing with that. dynamite, man. It's like fishing with time. <laughs> but you make a good point. You make a good point. Nobody was a Patriots fan when they were losing, right? No, hell no. They were uh, everybody I mean, you know, I had an uncle who was a big Oakland Raiders fan, and now all of a sudden he's a Patriots fan. I had a my cousin's ex husband was this big Giants fan. Went to went to games with my father at Foxborough Stadium, cheered for the Giants while they played the Patriots. Then when they started winning Super Bowls, now he's a big fan. Uh, you know, it's, everybody was a fan of somebody else, and then they got good. All bandwagon guys, but then they all tell the same story. Oh, I remember the three and thirteen years, and we suffered. It's like, <laughs> no, you didn't. You cheered for the 49ers then. <laughs> oh Jesus! Uh, it's very entertaining watching Brian's tweets during the football season as a Steelers fan. He even cuts promos on his meltdowns. own guys. Yeah, even the meltdowns I have during the. Uh, Lately, I've been I've been trying I've been going out of my way to try to get Antonio Brown to block me, the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you've you've um you've been kind of stiff. You you're working stiff, man. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. I think you you know if Doc knew how to actually if Doc knew how to use Twitter and did not like troll from his wife's account, he probably would be as bad as you on Twitter related to the Cowboys as you are with uh with with the Steelers. I could I could see that. He would he would actually cut promos on his own team from time to time because he hates Jason Garrett and um so on and so forth. Right right doc? I hate, I hate my owner, my general manager, and my coach. <laughs> well, two of those are the same person, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you know, I really should put a, ca you know, if I really wanted to gain social media followers, I would just put a camera on myself during, whether you know, whether it's the Steelers or um, I love baseball too. So during, uh, especially like during the World Series last year from the Red Sox, I, I watched, I watched the clinching game by myself, and I was. I mean, you're talking about a team that's up 3-1. Even if they lose a damn game, they have two more shots to close it out, and I like can't even stand like how how tense and how I'm like pacing the living room. I, I think I almost woke the kids up when they won. I mean, my, my wife sat down next to me 
Um, she likes to do that thing where uh, she doesn't really pay attention to sports, and then there's like a really key thing happening, and she now she wants to ask fifty questions. So she's I mean, it's game five of the World Series. They get a chance to win it, and she starts asking me questions. And I just literally looked at her and I go. You know, I don't want to have this conversation right now. I am very tense and stressed out. Like, no, I'm not doing this. Like, you haven't watched all season. You don't care. Doc, they're all the <laughs> same, man. They're all the same, Doc. <laughs> Black, white, brown, old, young, fat, skinny. <laughs> they're all the they're same. They're all man. the same. <laughs> they're all the same. They get mad at us for doing this show. It's a long story. Yeah. How's uh, Total Divas, by the way, Mike? <laughs> Uh, I have. Yeah, how actually, is Total Divas? No, it's funny you ask. I haven't been watching um, Total Divas this season. Actually, I don't even think it's on right now. Uh, the season, uh, but but I do know that Total Bellas is on because a couple weeks back, my wife was like, um, "Hey, do you want to watch Total Bellas with me?" And I was like, "I'm not watching that Outlaw Month show bullshit." <laughs> so she's she's been all into it uh, this this season. Evidently, there's all kind of stuff going on. I, it doesn't work for me. I, what about I, Ms. and Mrs.? Are you in on that? Mm, she watched a couple episodes of that. I only saw like the previews. I haven't really watched it, but yeah, it is what it is, man. No, <laughs> I I don't. I, you know, Crockett and I did a Patreon special episode on Total Divas, and I was I was actually shocked how how much your co-host Mike Crockett got into Total Divas. He was he was really into it, man. He was uh you know he was cutting promos, and we were we were, we were listening to everything going on in the show, and it was when Nikki and and Cena were 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 getting mad because Dolph was hitting on Nikki. It was actually beautiful. It was some of the best writing they did for the show, uh, in its existence. Like you could tell, it was all a work. It just was so obvious. But I haven't been keyed in on it at all, man. At all. Not 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 this. I I got I got away from it, and you know my life is a lot better for it. They, their writing went down. They weren't <laughs> booking good angles anymore, man. It was it was it's it's gotten rather stale. You got to have some major drama going on between the women for it to to have any type of sticking power, in my opinion. And it just it's, man, it's not man, I'd rather watch it. I'd rather watch an AAF triple header than watch the total bellas. <laughs> hey, yeah, it's not uh, that league's out of money already, aren't they? <laughs> that's a rumor. That's not true. I actually listened to an interview that the the investor gave, and he didn't he didn't lead on to anything like that. But anyway, uh, Doc, you got any more questions for uh, for for Brian Malone before we get him before we get him out of here? Hold a second. I, Triple H is cutting a promo. That's um yeah. We're gonna stay away from that right now. I promised Brian I would not talk WWE. While he was on, I, I would. I mean, we my... could talk if you want to. I, I'd talk about some of my friends if you want. I mean, I think you know. I know he's not on Raw, but what's going on with Kofi Kingston is just um, just un- unreal. You know, um, I, I think that's unreal. Which I, you know, I I, I I think that that's really cool to see. I hope. Um, no, no, no. You and I were texting during that during that elimination chamber match. I really want to see him win the title i know it's not a popular opinion people go oh my god he's so small how's he heavyweight champion i've read all the detractors but the guy has put in his time and i know that's not supposed to be a reason to give somebody a belt but he is so damn talented he can go he's great i want to see him win the world title i just want him to your thoughts yeah i i I agree um i i you know, I, I think he he deserves it. I think certainly, um, you know, I, I think the opportunity is right there for him. Um, I, I, hopefully, they pull the trigger with him and and move forward. Um, I, I mean, the one thing I can I can tell you definitively about about Kofi is um, he he is one of the best people I've ever met in my life, um, like as a person, as a human being. And um, he's literally the same person as the day I've met since the day I met him. Um, so it's just somebody who never forgot where he came from uh, and has worked incredibly hard for a long time. And when you look at his resume, whether or not he wins the, you know, wins the WWE championship, the guy's uh, the guy's a first ballot Hall of Famer and somebody who um, I mean, he'll, he's, he's going to be a lifer there. He'll probably have a job for life at, at WWE. Um, and what I think, I think what he means to that, I mean, just, and you know, it's, I think the coolest part about this, Mike, is not just seeing the fans, but seeing all the different guys in WWE just tweet about and actively rooting for him. Um, 
uh, it's just unbelievable. I think it speaks to who he is as a person and uh, literally to have just this groundswell of fans and wrestlers from all over the place and uh, just be behind him. It's, it's really cool, and I, ho- and I hope they do go all the way with him. You want to tell uh, – tell, uh, and, and we're running – I'm having you a lot longer than I wanted to because I know you got kids and stuff. But you want to tell the people how you know Kofi because I, uh, I don't know if everyone knows that story uh, is, because he, he knows Kofi really, really well, and I want him to share that. Yeah, I mean, so we, we started at the same place, the Chaotic Training Center in North Andover, Massachusetts, Killer Kowalski School of Pro Wrestling. Um, the first, I, I, you know, the, Kofi's first day of, of wrestling school, I happened, to be, I happened to be the one running the beginner's ring. Um, so I, I got to be with Kofi the first time he stepped foot in a professional wrestling ring, which is pretty, you know, pretty cool. And um, he was somebody that just... He fit in like a glove there with with those of us that were there working hard every class and um, but yeah I've no so I've known Kofi since literally since the day he started in uh, in wrestling and um, you know never you know he he's somebody who when he got signed and moved on to like you never forgot where he came from and um, you know stayed friends with. Uh, you know, I, I posted a picture recently, and it's my it's my favorite picture that I that I've taken in 17 years of of pro wrestling, um, and that and that's uh, you know it's me, it's Kofi, it's Tommaso Ciampa, it's Warbeard Hanson, and it's our friend Max um, Max Bauer who was Axel Keegan in NXT, um, and, but it just represents the group of people that I really feel like I came up with, and I, Kofi was only there for like a year, truth be told. Um, before before he gets signed but it's just the, the group of guys that when i think of um you know when i think of my younger days in wrestling when i think about starting out in wrestling when i think about cutting my teeth and when i think about a lot of the good times i had especially early on uh those that's the group of guys i you know that that i think of and those are the guys that i remain friends with uh all these years later and what's interesting was i had heard kofi tell the story about the, when he got signed and he, they were running him through all the paces. Like he was like, he was doing all these, I guess, uh, tryout matches. And he was the guy that they were putting every guy in there with. Like, is at least I seem to remember that's how the story was when he, he got signed. But, um, and you were there the whole time. And uh, yeah, he gets picked up and he's just a, a young guy. And look at him now, 10 years later. And it's amazing, man. Yeah, so, I mean, here's, so here's a fun a fun fact for your for your listeners. The tryout camp that uh, so we had a tryout camp at, at the wrestling school at Killer Kowalski's. Um, you know, it was it was when Nova was running developmental. Um, Simon Dean, Mike Bucci, uh, when he was running developmental, and um, Arn Anderson was there. Dean Malenko was there. Tim Horner was there. Oh boy. Um, and I'm trying to think. There was one. There's one more agent there and i can't remember who it was now but so we had a tryout and there was a select number of us um you know there for the tryout and the match that day that kofi had was it was kofi versus warbeard hansen um believe it or not um so uh you know kofi got signed off of that off of that tryout warbeard obviously much later but i think that's a that's a pretty cool i think fun fact for for people out there very, very interesting, and now we hope to see him win the world title. So there it is. Hell that. yeah! Uh, so wait, did you say? Yeah, Tim I can Horner? talk current WWE. <laughs> oh, of course, of course you get. Did you say Tim Horner was at the was at the tryout? It was. Yeah, that he was tryout? a. Yeah, he was an agent. So this, this literally like a group of them came to. Um, That's awesome. Came to the uh, training center, but yeah, he was, he was there for a short spell. I think I, I don't think he was there all that long, but um, overall in WWE, I, I mean. I, I'll give you, you know, and I'll give you a taste of what. And nobody had to take their shirts off that day except for me and Max <laughs> Bauer, and that's, you know, like, just, you know, that's it's like we rib. get in the ring. And Dean, Dean, Dean Malenko's done it twice to me. Um, there, there was uh, that time at that trial where he said to me and Max Bauer, "All right, guys, shirts off," and nobody else had to wrestle with their shirts off. And then uh, one time at uh, TV, it was actually the last t- time I was ever booked as an extra. Um, it was me and Warbeard Hansen, um, and we get in the ring and we get ready to go, and they go, "Oh, shirts off, guys." Okay, <laughs> shirts off. So do you, like, I felt like looking at him like. Do you not want us to wrestle? Like, are we wasting your time right now? <laughs> like, that's what I kind of felt like asking. And then, and then, that we saw two guys later on who had um, 
who had just come back from like a tryout in in Tampa, and because they were affiliated with a former, I'll leave the the name out of it, but uh, with a former WWE superstar, you know, they they got a look, and then Triple H came down to watch them have their tryout match, and it was awful. They got stopped in the middle of it because of how dangerous it was, and these guys just came back from a week, and and later on, one of the one of the people, you know, one of the one of the guys backstage pulled me and Todd aside and told us how well we did and then just started ripping on these other two guys who just got a tryout and that was like that was kind of like the beginning of the end for me mentally <laughs> with like oh my god I'm done pursuing this with, with WWE <laughs> uh, no that's 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 a good that's a cool story man so uh doc you got any more questions for uh Brian before he gets out of here sure one last question uh who is the greatest wrestler of all time and why is it Ric Flair <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna say hulk hogan just to piss you off man <laughs> i mean in my mind it is hulk hogan but that's you know that's a lot of sentimental value i will say i do love rick flair um that was my dad's favorite wrestler um we, we watched a lot my dad actually did not love wwf um but he was a big fan of like, i used to watch wcw saturday night with him every week um my dad my dad loved um love wcw or, or you know i guess that you know i guess i mean the show was called wcw yeah yeah no 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 uh, you're right like like but once you got the 85 i mean it was it was wcw i mean nwa wcw but yeah we know what you mean crockett yeah, crockett that, was that, like the, the crockett was basically tro- crockett was uh, jcp was controlling the nwa at that point they weren't technically but i guess they were depending on how you look at it so yeah yeah so that I mean he was he was my he was my dad's favorite and I loved it when he did come to WWF and um I mean Ric Flair is an un- I mean I can't sit here with a straight face and tell you that I think that I think Ric Flair is not you know you know maybe the greatest in ring performer of all time I, I I you know I think it's him or Shawn Michaels probably from the actual in ring work standpoint you know but I from my from nostalgia from watching him as a kid for um i mean the reason why i probably ever even tried to become a pro wrestler is falling in love with hulk hogan and um but you know rick flair is unbelievable like i could watch rick flair matches all day yeah and so your age too is another reason why you're a big hulk hogan fan because you yeah i was i mean I was six, seven, eight years old, right in the prime. You know, WrestleMania three. I was six years old. You know, so that's like prime, prime territory for Hulkamania. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is exactly what it is. So, all right, Doc. Any more questions for Brian before he gets out of here from right out of here and rides off into the sunset? No, I can't pay any more attention. Ascension's out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see ascension. I see um, heavy, heavy machinery and. In uh, the the B team, but um, Brian, heavy, machi- heavy heavy machinery is if you if you took like War Machine, but crossed them with like high voltage. Okay. <laughs> oh my! Your 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 reference. That's a hell of a reference. Yeah, man. High voltage. You remember high voltage from from the uh, from uh, WCW, Brian? I do remember high voltage. Yes. Good lord! I forget what year. So you're 17 years in. You didn't start until 2002. Then. Oh, 2001, like, tech, like the, the November, though. So oh, okay. I'm, I'm in my 18th year of, of it at this point. Gotcha, gotcha. No, no, t- I'm, I'm, I mentioned that because, like, I got, when, I was in the, when I got into the business, they were um, – I mean, I was in the business while I was watching them. And I, I always used to – I loved High Voltage, man. I mean, I don't know how to explain it. It wasn't that they did anything special, but I, I loved them, man. They were, they were kind of cool to watch and – and whatnot, and there was there were so many people on that WC roster, at, WCW roster at that point. It was ridiculous. I mean, if you think about it, if you sat down right now and just started writing down names from the roster in like 90, 95, 96, 97, man, they had so many people under contract. It was ridiculous. So I was a big fan of them, though, man. So yeah, you see, Malonis did watch the Monday Night Wars, and he watched that WCW <laughs> stuff. Don't let him fool you, man. He likes. I the- did. I mean. I, did, I mean, if you look at it, too, if you look at, like, especially you're talking mid-90s, you look at, like, a WWF card from, like, 94, 95, like, holy shit, like, <laughs> so bad. Yeah. And I, yet I watched it, and I loved it, and I didn't know any better. I didn't have Twitter, and I didn't have a million people telling me 
that Duke Drosy versus Hunter Hearst Helmsley sucked. You know what I mean? Like it was just, I was a kid and I loved it and I loved it all. I loved watching, I, I watched as much wrestling as I could. I'd, my Saturday mornings were watching Superstars and Challenge. I'd watch, I'd watch Saturday night on, on Saturday nights at 6.05 TBS time. Uh, Sundays I'd watch uh, all American wrestling, uh, primetime wrestling when I could sneak up and my parents couldn't hear my TV in my room. Um, so I, I was just, I, I couldn't consume en- enough wrestling at, um, at, you know, at a very young age. And I was very crazed and, uh, and obsessed with it. I think that makes, uh, that makes three of us, man. I mean, we were all the same way. Doc, you, you like to act like you weren't, but I mean, we would, we would Jones for any type of wrestling we could find back in the day. I mean, you'd be flipping through the channels and see something. Oh my God, you'd stop it and you'd watch and. Yeah, so I mean, no matter what it was, WWF, WCW, I think we all went through that phase, man. It's uh, it's natural, and uh, the beauty of today's realm is, uh, I say it all the time, you know, if you don't like WWE as we watch Raw in the background here, you can watch ROH, and there's 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 a variety, is a spice of life when it comes to wrestling these days, in my opinion. So, I will uh, leave it at yeah, that. Yeah, there's no shortage. Yeah, there's no shortage. I, I don't. I honestly don't get the people who who piss and moan about WWE and then and then you know they still watch it every Monday and then they still watch every pay per view. It's like there is so much wrestling out there. You don't. You you can watch. You can watch your fill of wrestling and never even turn on WWE if you don't want to. If you don't like it, and that's what the, that's what people don't understand. They think they think the I. It's a saying I'm really fond of, and that's the opposite of love isn't hate. The opposite of love is indifference. And if you stop. If you start turn, look at the way they're reacting right now. You know, I think WWE is reacting to ratings and things like that. But just that's what if, if like booing and and social media interactions and things like that. That's just, I mean, that's publicity. All publicity is good publicity. Uh, that you're talking about it. That's what that's what a company wants. Whether it's WWE, Ring of Honor, AEW, they they want to drive. Especially now, they want to drive social engagement. And whether that's good or bad, if you're talking about it, that's that's a higher social engagement for them, um, you know. But if you don't like something, don't don't watch it, don't consume it. Um, watch Ring of Honor, watch AEW, when, you know, when it starts up. Um, watch Impact, watch New Japan Pro Wrestling, watch all these independent promotions that are watch. You know, Beyond Wrestling up here is going going to have a weekly live web series that they're that they're starting. You watch watch that every week. Like there's. There's no shortage of wrestling, so there's no excuse to be it, – like, it's supposed to be fun, and if you're miserable watching something, find something else to watch. Well, you know, it's clearly you said that. It, like, uh, like, I actually like NXT. I don't watch the weeklies, but I always watch the specials. But not just that. Uh, you know, you're talking about all the current stuff. The beauty of today, and Doc and I talk about this all the time, is – we have everything in history at our fingertips as well to watch and enjoy. Right, Doc? Yeah, as soon as I can get my hands on that Ron Fuller Southeastern tape collection, I'll I'll have it. I'll have it all. Yeah, we. I mean, we basically. So you know, we have so much to watch. And and man, I Stephen Javorski, I see you out there. Phobos two seven one. Every everything he said, along with Impact and ROH, that dude, Stephen, you watch more wrestling than any human being I know. You watch every single promotion there is. And you have a full time job, which is even more impressive. So I plus you have a girlfriend as well, which is God, you are you Come are a on. legend. Nobody, belie- nobody <laughs> believes nobody believes that. Yeah, you had you had us till then. <laughs> no, he does, man. He's a he's, he's a good dude. He's been a patron of our show for a long time. But anyway, he watches everything. New Japan, MLW, Impact, ROH. Oh, I'm sorry, he says on the chat room he's got a wife. So he watches everything though, man. But uh um, Brian, uh, I know you've got a show coming up too. If you want to, before you get out of here, uh, mention Astro Mania and uh, anything else you want to mention related to the wrestling podcast about nothing or whatever else you got on got going on with ROH. Yeah, so yeah, if I don't plug stuff, Mike will get mad. So, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, me and Mike Crockett do this uh, every week uh, on our own. Uh, WPAN, the wrestling podcast about nothing, drops every Monday. Uh, we're on all your all the different podcatchers. I, I mean, do people? I don't even know what a pod. Podbean and all those, but just you know, if there's a if there's a podcast app, we're on it, and uh, you can also find us the WPAN.com, and we're the WPAN on all um, social media. Uh, my social media is uh, at Brian Malonis on Twitter and Brian Malonis ROH on 
on Instagram. And yeah, I got, you know, so I'm really, you know, I've, I've done a lot in pro wrestling, uh, but I've never promoted a show until now. So I'm very excited to uh, promote a show and help bring wrestling back to my hometown, Derry, New Hampshire. Uh, I'm a member of the community here and really excited to uh, to bring pro wrestling back to Derry, New Hampshire. And um uh, going to be a really fun night. I'm, I'm bringing the bruiser in. So the bouncers will be uh, will be here. Astromania LSW dot com for tickets shows on uh, Saturday night, March the 30th. So coming up here uh, just in a few weeks. And yeah, man, I, I, my ring of honor schedule is picking up like crazy you know coming up we, we got a, a 17th anniversary uh pay-per-view and television taping in a couple weeks in vegas uh, after that pittsburgh and columbus uh then war of the worlds uh you know i think it's buffalo toronto grand rapids and chicago and then uh, I'm, i mean something i'm really excited for to go to the pacific northwest for the first time in june so um it's exciting, man. I got a lot on my goddamn plate. <laughs> I'm sure you're not complaining, though, man. This is kind of what you work for uh, for a very long no, time, it's, which I'm, is cool. I, I'm grateful. I, I'm, I'm truly um, grateful and humbled by just the opportunity that, that I've been given. And, um, you know, it, feel, it feels good to also kind of reward or feel like I've, I've rewarded the faith of, of people who never gave up on me, who have been there since the beginning, uh, and, and have really supported me with that, you know, friends, family, um, you know, um, I, I mean, I can't, I can't say enough good things about a guy like Todd Sinclair, who we started, um, together the, the same week at pro wrestling school. And, uh, he's been so instrumental in, in, uh, getting, you know, helping me get an opportunity in ring of honor. So, um, I'm a lucky guy and I feel lucky, Mike, and I feel grateful and, um, you know, I, I I I love pro wrestling, and I'm and I'm and I'm glad uh, to have the opportunity to extend my career, hopefully for a very long time. You know, the best part about you and Bruiser is the entrance from the bar. <laughs> you know, there, I think there's a lot of guys who want to fight to wrestle us, uh, if just because they get free post match beer. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like y'all are coming from the bar. I mean, Bruiser's been doing his keg for as long as I've watched him in ROH. But y'all come from the bar. Y'all got the beer in y'all hands and the beer cups. It's a it's a cool little entrance, man. The crowd gets into it, and uh, y'all got y'all little theme music now and whatnot, or entrance music, I should say. Uh, it's really it's a it's a fun time, man. So I enjoy ROH. I fully believe, and I've told him this a million times. Um, uh, on Twitter, Ian Riccoboni is fantastic as a commentator. Uh, him and Colt are great as a team. Uh, even when Caprice is in there with him, I mean, it's still still damn good. Uh, but, you know, y'all got some good stuff going on in ROH, so just keep it up, man. And um, uh, I appreciate you taking some time uh, with us tonight. Uh, almost an hour, man. So, well, this is your third or fourth time actually being on the show. I'm going to cut this in and put this on the main show. I know we're doing YouTube Live, but... Uh, I'll cut this on the main show and post it uh, in a couple of weeks or so. I'll make sure I do it before uh, before, before Mania Weekend and MSG and all that. But uh, that way, I mean, if you're listening live or you see it on our YouTube channel, you got that exclusive with Brian Malone. It's going to be at our at, at MSG, Mike Crockett. <laughs> Don't tell uh, Mike. Shh. <laughs> Don't tell Mike find, Crockett. Yeah. Somebody's going to tweet him just because you said that. <laughs> uh, but no, man, I appreciate your time. And uh, I, I I appreciate it, man. This, is, this has been a lot of fun. Um, so... Doc, if you don't have anything else, man, we'll uh we'll let the, the Malonis go and get back to doing what he does in life. All right. All right, uh, Brian. Thanks, fellas. No problem. Take man. care. Catch you another time, bud. All right. Bye. Bye bye.